The Spanish conquest of Yucatan was the campaign undertaken by the Spanish conquistadores against the late post-classic Maya states and polities in the Yucatan Peninsula, a vast limestone plain covering southeastern Mexico, northern Guatemala, and all of Belize. The Spanish conquest of the Yucatan Peninsula was ended by its politically fragmented state. The Spanish engaged in a strategy of concentrating native populations in newly founded colonial towns. Native resistance to the new nucleated settlements took the form of the flight into inaccessible regions such as the forest, or joining neighboring Maya groups that had not yet submitted to the Spanish. Among the Maya, ambush was a favored tactic. Spanish weaponry included broadswords, rapiers, lances, pikes, halberds, crossbows, matchlocks, and light artillery. Maya warriors fought with flint-tipped spears, bows, and arrows and stones, and wore padded cotton armor to protect themselves. The Spanish introduced a number of old-world diseases previously unknown in the Americas, initiating devastating plagues that swept through the native populations. The first encounter with the Yucatec Maya may have occurred in 1502, when the fourth voyage of Christopher Columbus came across a large trading canoe off Honduras. In 1511, Spanish survivors of the shipwrecked caravel called Santa Maria de la Barca sought refuge among native groups along the eastern coast of the peninsula. Hernan Cortés made contact with two survivors, Jerónimo de Aguilar and Gonzalo Guerrero six years later. In 1517, Francisco Hernández de Cordoba made landfall on the tip of the peninsula. His expedition continued along the coast and suffered heavy losses in a pitched battle at Champaton, forcing a retreat to Cuba. Juan de Grijalva explored the coast in 1518 and heard tales of the wealthy Aztec Empire further west. As a result of these rumors, Hernán Cortés set sail with another fleet. From Kazumal he continued around the peninsula to Tabasco where he fought a battle at Potenchan. From there Cortés continued onward to conquer the Aztec Empire. In 1524, Cortés led a sizable expedition to Honduras, cutting across southern Campeche and through Petén in what is now northern Guatemala. In 1527 Francisco de Montijo set sail from Spain with a small fleet. He left garrisons on the east coast and subjugated the northeast of the peninsula. Montijo then returned to the east to find his garrisons had almost been eliminated. He used a supply ship to explore southwards before looping back around the entire peninsula to central Mexico. Montijo pacified Tabasco with the aid of his son, also named Francisco de Montijo. In 1531 the Spanish moved their base of operations to Campeche, where they repulsed a significant mayor attack. After this battle, the Spanish founded a town at Chichen Itza in the north. Montijo carved up the province amongst his soldiers. In mid-1533 the local mayor rebelled and laid siege to the small Spanish garrison, which was forced to flee. Towards the end of 1534, or the beginning of 1535, the Spanish retreated from Campeche to Veracruz. In 1535, peaceful attempts by the Franciscan Order to incorporate Yucatan into the Spanish Empire failed after a renewed Spanish military presence at Champatón forced the friars out. Champatón was by now the last Spanish outpost in Yucatan, isolated among a hostile population. In 1541, 40 to the first permanent Spanish town councils in the entire peninsula were founded at Campeche and Mérida. When the powerful Lord of Mani converted to the Roman Catholic religion, his submission to Spain and conversion to Christianity encouraged the lords of the western provinces to accept Spanish rule. In late 1546 an alliance of eastern provinces launched an unsuccessful uprising against the Spanish. The eastern mayor were defeated in a single battle, which marked the final conquest of the northern portion of the Yucatan Peninsula. 
the polities of Pertain and the South remained independent and received many refugees fleeing from Spanish jurisdiction. In 1618 and in 1619 two unsuccessful Franciscan missions attempted the peaceful conversion of the still pagan Itza. In 1622 the Itza slaughtered two Spanish parties trying to reach their capital Nojpatain. These events ended all Spanish attempts to contact the Itza until 1695. Over the course of 1695 and 1696 a number of Spanish expeditions attempted to reach Nojpatain from the mutually independent Spanish colonies in Yucatan and Guatemala. In early 1695 the Spanish began to build a road from Campeche south towards Petain and activity intensified, sometimes with significant losses on the part of the Spanish. Martín de Erza y Arizmendi, governor of Yucatán, launched an assault upon Nojpatán in March 1697. The city fell after a brief battle. With the defeat of the Itza, the last independent and unconquered native kingdom in the Americas, fell to the Spanish. As I began to research, even I, as someone who had been paying attention to some of these sorts of things for a long time, and was open to alternative explanations, even I was fairly astonished when I put it together, basically by going county by county, and finding the criminal arrest records and the jail records in county after county after county from this period of time, and seeing that, if there had been crime waves, there had to have been records of crimes and people being arrested for crimes. And in reality, it's just not there. There's no evidence that that ever happened. In fact, it's the opposite. The crime waves that occurred by and large were the aftermath of the war and whites coming back from fighting in the Civil War, and settling scores with people and all sorts of renegade activity, that didn't involve black people at all, but they were blamed for it, and that was then used as a kind of ruse for why these incredibly brutal new legal measures then began to be put in place, 5 The resulting book. Slavery by another name, was published by Anchor Books in 2008.